But to test my theory, here's what I want to do. I want to actually use a desktop power supply, which you can see here. And I'm going to use this to provide 3.3 volts. That's in the middle of the range that it expects. And I'm limiting it to uh, 300 milliamps. And so I'm going to provide this directly to the system without the Dediprog even attached. And I want to see with the logic analyzer, is that going to cause the system to actually power up? So I go ahead and I just disconnect my Dediprog, a little overly disconnected there. But uh, then I need to connect my power to my power. So I'll put this right here. Power to power and ground to ground. And now I've successfully connected power and ground. And I want to see on the logic analyzer, you know, what do I see if I just go ahead and turn the power on and there's no Dediprog there whatsoever. So I go ahead and hit start. Now I'm pressing the power button. And what I see is a whole bunch of traffic on the system. So that ultimately looks like normal spy reading to me. Spy accesses rather that you would see at boot time. So let's go ahead and dig into that and see whether we can actually, you know, confirm or refute that. Well, we can see that there's proper parsing going on over here. And what we see is a dual output fast read. So let's go ahead and jump to that. Okay, so here we have our 3B, which is the dual output fast read. And so then we've got next up the address, three bytes, all zero. So it's basically saying it's reading from address zero. Now we want to move on to see the data. We've got a few dummy cycles on this sort of command. And so you know, I would have to go back to the data sheet to make sure I'm putting in the right number of dummy cycles. But I know from looking it up, it is eight for this. All right, and then now I see the data. And what I'm seeing is FF, 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 and so forth. And ultimately what makes me know that I'm looking at something that's valid is because then eventually I see the magic spy flash descriptor signature, 5A, A5, F0, and this should be 0F, but uh, I think there's some parsing error going on right here. And it's probably a spurious, spurious transaction. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. We've got a missing clock cycle here. So the logic analyzer missed a clock cycle and that's uh, leading to incorrect data interpretation. But that's fine. The main point here is that, you know, we are seeing expected data that would be appropriate for being at address zero on a Intel spy flash chip. 16 bytes of Fs followed by the magic signature at offset 16. So cool, that's, you know, good in some sense, but it's bad in another sense, right? It's bad in the sense that we now know that the Dediprog providing power to the system seems to be causing the PCH and or CPU to power up and start reading from the spy flash to do its normal boot, the normal BIOS type boot of the system. So that's obviously a problem for us because we just want to read the spy flash chip. We don't want to be causing the system to boot up and, you know, give us all of this, you know, conflicting data and causing trouble. So my first thought when I was looking at this was, well, okay, why don't I let the system get to steady state where it's just doing nothing and the system is booted and, you know, maybe nothing's try to read UEFI variables or anything like that. If I just let it get to steady state, then I've got, you know, voltage, I've got the chip select low. And so it seems like I should be able to use the Dediprog to actually, you know, do the, the read at that point. Well, let's see what the result of that is. So then I need to make sure that my Dediprog is actually connected. I accidentally unplugged it before, so I make sure it's connected again. I start the logic analyzer. I turn on the power supply, and then I wait for it to be done reading data off the spy flash chip. That looks like it's done to me. Then I start the Dediprog. It attempts the identification, but unfortunately it is going to fail again. And we'll see what we actually see from the Dediprog here in a second after it fails. Okay, so we can clearly see this sort of legitimate looking thing where we have some initial read followed by a whole bunch of reads. And then we have, again, sort of garbage looking stuff where there's, I mean, you know, it's not necessarily garbage, but we have to, you know, zoom in on something to find, you know, is this actually legit? Well, we've got, you know, some reasonable, uh, we've got some reasonable clock movement here, but we've just got zero data there. So 
kind of add back in my data analyzer. I removed it for a second because I thought there was an error. So putting the QSPY back in, telling it to analyze. So you can see here that it's saying, yes, it sees an INF, but the data immediately after that is zeros. And that's not what we're looking for. So back here, we've got some more zeros. So I'm going to zoom out and try to find the very first instance of stuff after the uh, system is starting to attempt identification again. Okay, there's nothing there, so we move forward in the clock. And we've got F7. That doesn't seem like legitimate value that we're expecting, right? Well, we have 9F here, and we can see there's a little bit of a glitch right there. So we have the Dediprog sending 9F, but then after that we're seeing, you know, something invalid. We're seeing this is still high, and so the parser is interpreting that as F7 and moving on. Now, in reality, that's not what's actually happening here. What we're seeing is it turns out that this chip select line is being forced low by the currently powered on CPU PCH circuitry. So the Dediprog wants to do 9F and then raise the, uh, and then it wants to get the EF back and then it wants to raise the chip select, but it's never actually able to do that. So here we've got some clocking again. And if we eyeball parse this rather than believe the parser, we could believe that this is EF, right? We got one, 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 zero, so that's an E, and then one, 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 F, so that's an F, but then, you know, it, it, actually right there, I didn't see this in my previous things, but you can see that actually the Dediprog tried to bring the chip select line high, but there's some circuitry that's holding it low, so it's not able to do that, right? Remember, low is like ground. So you can put some voltage in, but it's just going to be grounded back out. So then the Dediprog once again tries to send in the 9F, and then again it uh, it doesn't try to raise the chip select, but instead uh, this particular spy chip is just sending nothing. It's sending out garbage, so zeros all along. So that's not what we're expecting. We've got some weird transaction here. One suggestion that I got at this point from folks online was, well, maybe the system is, you know, powered down and so it can't actually send a reply until it's powered back up. And so that sent me looking to the manual to find, you know, what sort of things it had for powering down versus waking up. And so there's a particular command here, which is B9. And if that is sent, this power down, so we've already powered up the CPU, so the CPU maybe then powered down the chip to basically say save some, save some current. So if the system powered it down, it would send a B9, and then it would bring chip select high, and then the system would be at a power down mode. But that seems probably not to be the case because it should keep the chip select high and basically not be selecting the chip ever after, but we can see based on our logic analyzer that it is low forever. But just in case I tried to, you know, send the equivalent power back up or release from power down command, because it turns out the Dediprog does have a way to just send commands directly. So if I wanted to send an AB to try to wake the device up, the Dediprog under config and engineering mode, you can send bytes. So I could just say AB and then send single command and then I would be attempting a wake up. Now, what I saw was that didn't do anything. You know, I sent an AB, so I could do AB, and then I could send a 9F to try to do identification as well. But ultimately, what I saw was these didn't do anything. They still kept getting back garbage. And I think this is ultimately down to the fact that the Dediprog cannot bring chip select high. And in the manual, it says that after you send the AB, the chip select needs to be made high. So basically, I think it's not doing anything. So maybe the CPU itself could power it back up if it was actually powered down. Don't really know. But uh, this is just to show you kind of what behavior we're seeing on the chip. So again, the idea was maybe if I just let it get to steady state after it's done with this, then maybe I could go ahead and, you know, send in commands and do the reads, do the identification. But the result was no, Dediprog still fails here. And it seems to largely be down to the fact that it can't bring the chip select high. Or possibly the device has been put into a sleep mode, although that doesn't seem to be likely because of the low chip select.